Welcome to the Why Not Podcast with me, Chrissy Hawkins. In a world where everybody asks you why, I'm here to ask why not. So sit back and relax or walk and listen and join me on this journey as we try to answer this never ending question. What makes people say why not? Okay, hi guys, and welcome to my Get Stronger in the Saddle with this Strength Training Method Masterclass. So, really delighted for everyone to have joined today. And for those who are going to be watching later, I have recorded this for you guys. So, I hope you enjoy this as well. Firstly, just a few little bits we want to go through before we start this webinar. Just want to let you know that you are in the right place if you struggle with confidence when riding you feel unbalanced when riding um that can be sometimes caused by the horse but if it's in a general uh, time <laughs> you know we don't want to be unbalanced um if you just can't seem to shake an old injury like you know that niggly thing from that injury you had years ago if that's not going away um you're also in the right place here and if you've constant back pain is another one um obviously if we have tight hips that can cause back pain there's a load of different reasons for it but you are in the right place as i said and if you just can't seem to improve your riding no matter how many lessons you do that's another reason there as well so firstly i just wanted to let you know how this is going to work so Firstly, we're going to do a little introduction. So I, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and how I came to doing this here. We're going to talk about the unique demands of riding because it is a lot different to a lot of sports in so much that our horses, basically our teammates in other sports, normally teammates are human, whereas in, you know, with us, our horses are not human. So basically, if you want to tell a teammate in another sport what to do, you yell at them. Whereas here, we have to kind of work with them and give them communication in a completely different way. And again, I'm not going to refer to horses equipment, but in other sports, if you've got a stick or you've got a, you know, another thing that you're working with as part of your sport, it doesn't have a mind of its own. So it's not going to have good, bad days or spook at a bush. <laughs> um I'm going to talk about areas we need to focus on as horse riders because there are multiple different areas specific to horse riding that we need to work on um, and what you can really do to make a change. There will be a little Q&A at the end as well if you have any questions at all. So firstly, hello, I'm Chrissy. I am an online strength coach who works with equestrians to help them improve their riding position help them rehab old injuries and just feel more stronger and more confident uh, both in and out of the saddle. So where I came from, what I do is I have been horse riding for well over 20 years. In the last year or so, my own horse retired. So he is now living his best life and he is a beautiful field ornament that gets carrots every day. So, you know, living the dream. But I've also got... When it comes to the fitness industry, I have been a PT for over a personal trainer for over eight years at this point. I've worked in the industry with all different types of clients, aging from 16 to in their 70s and 80s. I am also a neuromuscular therapist. So what that is, is a type of physical therapist. And we look at the body as a whole. So if you have an injury in a certain place, we won't necessarily work on just there. We're going to work on... You, you could have a sore shoulder and the issue could be down in your hip. So that's where we kind of look at body as a whole. As I said, we try to find where the source of the injury is instead of necessarily just looking at that one position. So I found that really, really helpful when it comes to combining my knowledge of horse riding, my knowledge of training and my knowledge of how the body works to bring this all together into this kind of style of um, working with equestrians. So let's start strength and conditioning for equestrians. Okay, so riding a horse requires a unique blend of physical strength, stability, and endurance. So as I was saying before, unlike in other sports, equestrian athletes have to coordinate their body movements with the horses. 
and they were placing specific demands on their musculoskeletal system to perform their best and prevent injury we need tailored strength and conditioning program that addresses specific needs of sport so there's no point you go into a class that's going to just make you do burpees until you throw up now look if that's what you want to do if you enjoy that that's fine but as equestrians we kind of need to focus on stuff that we are um like muscles that we're using all the time and try to strengthen them and work at something that's going to work towards what we want to do so what are those things let's find out <laughs> okay so here are the unique demands of riding basically these are a couple of different areas of the body that we really need to focus on as horse riders okay so firstly our core everyone's heard of the core it gets talked about constantly but what i think a lot of people don't realize is your core actually goes from your diaphragm down to your glutes so it includes all the muscles front and back that includes your abs that includes your back muscles includes your hips and your glutes so the strong core is essential for maintaining balance stability and control while riding equestrians they need to engage all of these ex uh these um muscles that i've just explained here your abdominal your back your hip muscles stay centered in the saddle and respond to the horse's movement because we want to work with our horse when we are engaged in our core we want to still be able to move so another thing that's really cool is we need to be able to breathe so we need to tense as opposed to we don't suck in so it's important to be able to engage all these while moving with the horse and that's something that takes a lot of practice number two is our leg strength so having powerful leg muscles are so crucial for guiding the horse and applying subtle leg ages aids like this is this is the, the main strength this is how dressage riders are so good okay also maintain secure position in the saddle that could be your three point position that could be jumping position that could be whatever you're doing like you could be on the flat you could be in the air you could be on cross country but we need to have strong legs okay equestrians they need to have strength to grip the horse the legs without excessive tension again this is much like the core we need to be grounded and we need to be um held like able to hold on but still move with the horse and this requires requires a hell of a lot of strength so i think we don't realize the amount of strength we need in our muscles to be able to do this while still being able to move um third one is grip strength so i think this also goes to your back strength a little bit as well but obviously like having strong grip like helps you maintain control of the reins and steering the horse now i know we don't want to be reefing them around the place but having good like strong back muscles as well we would be able to give those aids nice and quietly and subtly like with our legs um we also do need to be able to have forearm strength and to help manage the horse movements um and also like you're like if you're on a long ride or a long competition you're going to have to be holding the reins for a long time so it's really really important that we can maintain that grip strength without fatigue um and last one is cardiovascular fitness now this is the one that i will say you can probably do while on the horse so don't worry if um it's like this is like obviously finding time to train can be difficult and getting cardio in as well but this will be the one i would say is one that you can improve while being on the horse so as we know riding can be an intense physical activity especially during competitions or long training sessions like if you're doing things over and over you know we need to have good cardiovascular fitness to be able to endure the, the demands of the sport without becoming fatigued and remember as well fatigue in the body translates up to the mind as well so if you are absolutely exhausted absolutely gassed it's going to be a hell of a lot harder for you to concentrate and it's more likely that you will maybe miss a transition or go wrong with a course offenses so we need to be able to get that oxygen to the body with our cardiovascular fitness get the oxygen around the body up into the brain and be able to focus all the time um and really really important and something that we kind of forget i think sometimes as well so
So let's start with core strength and stability, okay? So here's three exercises that we can use to help improve our strength. One thing I think as well, very important to note that the likes of sit-ups are not going to be very helpful for your core stability. They're great for working on your ab muscles, perfect, but we actually want the whole core stability. And this is why these types of exercises all work with a bit of coordination or a bit of tension that can help you build the strength, as I said, endurance and stability of those core muscles. First off, the famous, well known, there's about a million different versions of these and that's planks. So you got your traditional plank, a straight body, um, side planks, which are horribly horrible, but really, really good as well for more balance and strength and stability. Um, the other, there's another few versions like a plank shoulder tap or a plank leg lift that I find really good as well. And the aim about that as well, it takes more stability because you're taking away one of your, so you're taking away your legs or you're taking away your arm, which is going to actually make it harder to balance. So if you can maintain a still a body position while doing them, it's really going to help and translate up onto the horse. So the thing about them as well is they don't just engage your abs. Again, abs are not just your core. It's actually going to engage your back and your hip muscles, which are also really essential for maintaining a strong and balanced riding position. So these are really good exercises. Again, we can focus on our breathing and you getting used to tensing the muscles without like sucking in. Really, really important to know the difference. If you can brace your abs, you can still breathe. If you suck in, you can't. And it's going to really affect how you move while you're on a horse as well. The next one is hollow holds. So if you've done Pilates, you may well have done these before. They are a fun exercise to say the least. But basically what we're going to do is you're going to lie on your back and you're going to lift your arms and lift your legs. So lift your shoulders up off the ground and lift your legs. Okay. This, the reason we do this is it targets your deep core muscles that are responsible for stabilizing your spine. Again, because we're going to work on that stabilizing the spine, stabilizing um, the, the trunk, it's going to help you maintain a neutral spine and engage their co your core while riding. So really, really good one. Again, it's quite a difficult exercise, but really helpful for, for if you need to do that kind of stability. Again, building that strong core really helps you sit up straight as opposed to lean back. Um, it's really, really important. And then the last one is dead bugs, right? This exercise is also quite amusing to do. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to lie on your back with your arms up in front of you and your knees bent at a 90 degree angle. And you're going to go opposite arm, goes back with the opposite leg, okay? You're going to alternate. And the whole time you're doing this, which is really fun, is you have to try and keep the other hand straight up in front of you. The reason I find it fun is because it's almost like patting your head and rubbing your belly at the same time you keep just until you nail it it's so difficult and it's actually quite a laugh to do to be fair but the reason it's important not just to laugh at people is it challenges the core to stabilize the spine and the pelvis okay and it really helps you develop coordination and control the kind of stuff you need for smooth transitions and movements in the saddle. Now, there is one thing I will say about dead bugs and hollow holds is we do need to make sure when we're doing these that our, our back is not arching up off the mat. If your back is arching up off the mat, you are not uh, engaging your abs properly. And what we want to do is try and pull that belly button down to the floor when you're doing it. And specifically with the hollow hold if you need to lift your legs up higher so the closer they are to the floor the harder it's going to be if you can't keep that back down lift the legs up higher it'll take the pressure off your back uh, with the dead bugs just really focus on slow movements and keeping that core engaged it's a little bit easier because your legs are bent and you're only moving one, one at a time but just make sure you're in that position before you start so improving our leg strength and endurance so as we said legs were the biggest group of biggest muscle group in the body and incredibly important if you're a horse rider i have never seen a horse rider with small legs and i think that's a testament to how much muscle we build while riding and there's a reason why keeping having good endurance in our legs 
can be really important, whether you are a dressage rider or a jumper or even a race, race, racer. Um, and here's a few exercises that's going to help that. Okay. So first off squats. So squats are a fundamental exercise for building strength and, and endurance. Okay. So the reason is a squat, because there's so many different variations of squats as well. They work so many muscles in your upper leg. Okay. Also your standard squat as well mim mimics rise and trot. So if you can get good at that underweight, you should be able to repeat it um, on the horse quite quite easily um they're very very close in in um in style but you know stuff like using the goblet squat again that's going to be your as you said you're holding weight in front of you we're going to focus on those quads a little bit more and split squats which is a single leg exercise that can help you work your hamstrings your quads and your glutes all at the same time um they're really going to help you specifically target the muscle groups that we need while riding and especially with the the likes of the split squat you are doing a single leg exercise is going to really help you work on your balance and your core strength as well because we should still be engaging our core when we do exercises that aren't necessarily core exercises okay um the second one being lunges so there are multiple different versions of lunges you've got forward lunges back lunges side lunges curtsy lunges um but they all help you de develop strength and stability um which you are need for your giving effective leg aids and a secure riding position again lunges are a single leg exercise so you will find one side is is harder than the other always but again they are going to be exercises that are fantastic for building your stability and that translates then into your riding because it'll help you stay stable and also if you lose a stirrup It'd be easier to grip on with the stirrupless side. Um, I think it's really, really important to use static lunges or dynamic lunges variations into their training. So your static ones are just literally you're going staying in position, not stepping up or back. Dynamic is you're moving, you're moving off your foot, so you're stepping forward, coming back, or stepping to the side. I think lateral um, lunges or side lunges are really, really helpful as well for equestrians because we often have very tight hips from the way we sit in the saddle. And by strengthening that outer glute, by stepping out and stepping off, it really helped take pressure off those hips because we do tend to be weaker on that side because of the sport. And it's really, really important to try and get that balance back as much as we can. So a last one here, and now this is a gym based exercise. You can do resistance bands, but it is better on a machine. Um, basically, it helps you load the really load your muscles um and build power needed for the power you kind of need for jumping for galloping and other like high intensity riding maneuvers so the reason the leg press is great as well for power is you can get a really explosive press on them because it's on a track so it can only go one way and back and um, when it comes to a lot of exercises i would say it's important that we try not to i suppose you can do these kind of things with squats and lunges um, I would advise not doing it more than with body weight because the danger level goes up. So with a leg press, you can do an explosive thing and you know the weight's always going to stay in that position. Whereas if in your free weight and you're trying to squat or to, trying to jump or lunge, you do have the possibility to lose balance and do an injury that way. Um, so if you are doing any kind of explosive, I do think it's, uh, unless they're body weight, important to try and do that with the like a leg press machine or a smith machine somewhere where you can keep the kind of weight controlled on the plane of movement that you're using um another thing that i've seen a lot of online recently and it looks really cool and everything's great like that is seeing people doing exercises either standing on a fit ball or a bosu ball and to be honest um firstly as well bosu ball they are those like a like half fit balls with a platform they have it actually on their website saying that they don't recommend that you stand on a bosu ball because it's incredibly dangerous we fall off and as people who sit up on half ton animals for fun or for a living it's very important that we basically the payoff you get or you get for working doing this style of training 
it's not worth the level of danger it is because we already as i said sit on half ton animals who sometimes like to rocket launch us off we don't need an extra way of potentially hurting yourself um and i think like you can fall off one of them and if you come down onto a gym floor you can smash your collarbone you can wreck your knee and it's just not worth it like you can get enough benefit from doing stability exercises with lunges or split squats or you know anything that's going to put you on a single leg you don't need to be on an even surface um i did a podcast recording with um uh jordan syatt and he was literally a specialist witness in a case where um someone really severely injured themselves they weren't a horse rider off uh standing on a bosu ball and they sued the pants off their trainer um so yeah you can end up with a very severe injury and it's just not worth it for the amount of benefit you can get from it but that's just what i think anyway next we're just going to run through the grip power very very quickly so basically a few options for this and again grip isn't necessarily hanging off the head of your horse it is being able to hold on and keep maintaining that for long periods of time as well and also there are some benefits as well to train your back which i'll go through in the last one here so first off we've got wrist curls you're literally just going to be on a barbell doing that okay the reason we would do this is because it'll target your forearm flexor and muscles that are responsible for gripping the reins okay it'll help you maintain control and pretend fatigue during long rides so this again doesn't matter if you are doing like maybe endurance riding if you're doing dressage with multiple horses if you're out in cross country like you know being able to maintain that grip strength is going to be quite important so just do little things like this can help a little bit you know and um, we have the grip trainers as well they are you've seen them all before the little handy things you just squeeze them um, really really handy you can this kind of thing you can be watching tv if you want to improve your grip strength you know um and really 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 can help um as i said keep that rein control keep grip over long time periods of time you're not necessarily reefing the head off the horse but you might just need to hold on to the reins a little bit tighter um and then again the last one so this one is kind of more of a back exercise but obviously you need to grip with your hands when you're doing them but pull-ups uh obviously pull-ups are really really difficult it took me over a year to be able to do a pull-up uh so you know adding in resistance bands where you can give yourself an extra like so basically you put a resistance band around the bar and put your feet into it and it helps you lift yourself or a lap pull down which is the machine we see in the gym like this where we come down that one um are both very very helpful for one mostly their upper back but uh, exercise but they will help your grip strength but i think also very important to have good strong back muscles when we're riding the reason being is it does help you maintain your position so we're able to sit up and keep our shoulders back and down as opposed to leaning back but also it helps us give those subtle aids like if you're bending the horse or if you're trying to turn or you know little things like that you, you you can pull back and even if you're trying to stop the horse it stops us leaning back and having to reef back you can pull from your elbows and try and maintain the control from there so really really important to do have nice strong back muscles as well now developing cardiovascular fitness as i said this is the one that we can do on the horse um if you want to improve our cardiovascular fitness is very important depend no matter what um discipline we're in and there's a few different options here so the first one is interval training now this is great if you've got short periods of time and you want to kind of get it done quickly you know less than 10 minutes maybe 15 minutes max but the only thing is it can be quite high impact if you're trying to get the best benefit out of it so you know doing like sprints or like cycling intervals can really help if you have any previous kind of um ankle hip knee injuries you might find sprinting is quite hard on them um that's why cycling would be a little bit better because there is no impact in that it'd be a great way and also it builds your leg strength um there's a load of different hit workouts you'll find it um all over online and again they're very very quick and easily done but 
if it is something that you are kind of like short for time, really great way of getting that little extra cardio boost, you know, um, and it does help you maintain the cardiovascular fitness, you know, or develop the cardiovascular fitness that you need to be able to maintain your self during long sessions. Sorry, went to the blank there for a second, even though it was right in front of me. Um, next one's endurance workouts. So these are steady state cardiovascular exercises. So we're talking 15, 20 minutes plus. This is when you've got a bit of extra time. It can be jogging, it can be swimming, it can be cycling. Um, and basically it's all about building that aerobic capacity. You will still want to be getting your heart rate up, still getting a bit of a sweat, but we don't want to be absolutely gassed. You'd be more gassed if you're in the interval training. But again, if you have more time, you can do this. And again, you can do this in the saddle. You can, you know yourself, if you're riding for long periods of time, you'll get fatigued. So if you want to work on it in the saddle, it's really, really handy. Um, Again, these can be really good add-ons uh, that are not too strenuous to try and improve your overall endurance if you are someone who competes in the type of competitions where you're going to have to be basically very, very active <laughs> um, for long periods of time. Um, and then the last one's cross-training, right? So these are all the kind of types of different cardio exercise that you might not consider as exercise. So we have the likes of hiking, rowing, dancing, um, I don't know about maybe it's me because I've got short legs, but I always find walking uphill for long periods of time very, very difficult. Um, and, you know, it really does get the heart rate up. And it's a really great way of, as I said, training, but not feeling like you're training. Um, and these can really help you develop a well-rounded fitness level and prevent uh, boredom or plateaus in training. So I think maybe plateaus are a little bit less in horses. But it is like I would find if I'm doing strength training, like I do strength train regularly and every couple of months or so I have to change my program because otherwise I'll get really bored and I won't want to train. Whereas, and also if you are someone who strength trains a long time, um, plateaus are really, really common because you get to a point where you just can't lift any heart and it can be so frustrating and then eventually you might get like a kilo heavier. Um, but at least if you're doing other different types of training, it can kind of make it a bit more fun. I know you can have that as well with horses when it comes to like trying to get it to the next height level or when you get a certain move in. But um, obviously with the horses and them having their own mind, it can give you very surprising results sometimes. So sometimes you can't even get through the plateau because your horse has decided something scary today. And I think it makes it a little bit more interesting when you are working on something, the fact that this can be an element of it. Um, you might not feel as interesting when it happens, but you know, <laughs> it's good, I suppose. Um, so moving on, injury prevention and mobility are really, really important um, for, for riders. Um, obviously, the strength and conditioning actually is about preventing injury as opposed to necessarily getting stronger and bigger and stuff. Um, a lot of it, while the exercises do build strength, the whole idea of it is for you to prevent injury. But also there's other things on top of that where we are doing stuff like working on our flexibility. So doing dynamic and static stretching can really help keep your range of motion in the hips and the hamstrings and the shoulders. You know, we're always going to get tighter in these areas because we spend a lot of time in a certain position while riding. So trying to maintain them and one thing I will um, advise if you are someone who is doing stretching and whenever you stretch you push it for as far as you can until you feel it really really tight and it does it feels great when you let it go but try not to do that it's actually much better for you to go to about 30 percent tension and hold it there for 10 seconds then take a deep breath and as you exhale stretch a little bit further these will get you so much more benefit than that was really, really tight stretches because what's happening is when you stretch that so hard, um, you with the little function or muscles basically that stop us from from tearing, and when you when you go into that really tight stretch really, really quickly, they automatically lock up, so you're not getting any benefit. So if you gradually stretch into it, it gives your muscle time to actually stretch out, and this can really help, you know, reducing your risk of injury and 
during riding and actually improving your overall mobility because i think we forget that like mobility is not just on the horse it's in, in life in general um next one stability exercise like we've gone through with the core exercises you know balance exercise proprioception exercises anything like on single leg can be really fun i have the wobble board there as well but this as i said want to kind of stick to that if you're putting your hands on it because again less dangerous um and making sure like we can still get that kind of stability work without putting yourself in in as much danger but again they really challenge your neuromuscular system and really help you maintain your stability in the saddle and even like so, so, seeing things like standing on single leg like i have uh videos on my instagram and my tiktok and it's like you step out and like step on one leg and you lift out and around and uh basically you just try not fall over the whole time and it's really fun to do with someone even down the yard and just really practice and that all translates then into your riding as well because it helps you become more stable and balance yourself more um also injury rehabilitation is really really important and i think it's something that a lot of equestrians do um do kind of neglect so like if we do experience an injury like we nearly have to be hanging off us before we go and see anyone about it but it's really important to get like you know a comprehensive rehabilitation program we want to involve going to a physio if we can ideally unless obviously if it's something that lands you in hospital or you know if you've got a long-term niggle try go to a physio and get seen about it don't go to the doctor because often they'll give you painkillers the pain will go away when you're on painkillers and then it'll come back whereas a physio will actually work with you find out what the problem is and then we will they will build like basically give you a program to build back up and it's really important even if it's from old injuries around like that like muscle atrophy is a real thing and if we can make that area like build muscle around it and make it as strong as possible it's really really going to stand to you um and help you protect that muscle because or that area because the biggest precursor to injury is previous injury so we want to try and maintain ourselves as strong as possible when we can you know so you know it says gradual returning to riding and i know if anyone's struggling with injuries we're probably ignoring something because we don't want the physio to tell us to stop riding but these days a lot of times if it's something if they can physios will want you to keep in doing your sport while you are rehabbing something so you'll be able to do the project uh, do the program in conjunction with horse riding um unless it's something really really severe but you're better off getting it starting to now instead of waiting um until it becomes a point where you actually can't ride uh because you'll regret it if you do <clears throat> okay so really really important now that we put it all together into a comprehensive uh, approach right so you need to develop a well-rounded strength and conditioning program you know um it's important for all athletes to perform their best and prevent injury again really important we we are in a sport that injury levels are high partially because we have a higher risk for injury um and also partially because we don't look after ourselves so if we can try and help ourselves in any way shape or form we need to okay so as I said, like, you know, we need to address these unique physical demands, which are our core strength, stability, leg strength, grip power, and cardiovascular fitness. And it'll really help us maximize our performance and enjoy a long, successful career in the saddle. And look, I know we all ride for years. It's fantastic. Like, you know, it's great. It really has a longevity in the sport. But try and make it as comfortable as possible as well. Like, try, try not to, don't make your life harder than it needs to. Um, which I do think we do like doing, but you know, you don't have to struggle through pain and stuff. You don't have to just deal with it. There's a lot of stuff you can do to make your life easier. And I think we do a lot of things for our horses and um, where, you know, we would do anything for them, but we don't do the same for ourselves, which we need to do a little bit more. You know, if a horse looks at us wrong, we'll call the vet. Whereas we could be walking on, as I said, like hopping up to ride with one limb hanging off and sure, sure it's grand, you'll be back for grand tomorrow. So try and do do something for yourself as well. I think it's really, really important because it, you are like as as important as your horse, you know. Um so little Q and A here. I mean, this is the recording for anyone who didn't make it to the actual live, 
So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them on the YouTube and I'll try and get back to you. Um, obviously I'll get back to you with whatever answers I can. And um, so this will be up on the YouTube. Um, and lastly, I want to introduce you something that I'm launching in the next week. It is called Take the Reins. So basically, it's your turn. Um, what Take the Reins is, is a comprehensive program that basically covers all of the things that we've talked about today, okay? So it's for equestrians. Um, the exercise is gonna be built around things that exercise needs. So I will go into supply you the program and you can train in your own time so you are not tied to any times or dates or it's all up to you you can do it in your own leisure right there's an at home or at the gym um option what i will do is i'm going to include both on each program that you, if you buy it you'll get both options okay we have two three or four day programs available so depending on the time you have the train these you will get two days a week three days a week or four days a week program um normally they are 59 euro for the two-day program they're 69 for three-day program and 79 for four-day program but i'm applying a 20 percent discount for all webinar attendees so that includes yourself if you're watching this on the youtube video after and you're just going to need to quote the uh, code rains 20 when you're purchasing and that will be applied to the program straight away um, I do have other coaching that, uh, options. I do online one-to-one -one coaching over eight weeks. If you want to find out more information, drop me a message over on uh, Instagram and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have about that. But that's everything from tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find it really, really informative. And I, if you have any questions, drop them on the YouTube here. I'm happy to answer them. Um, or drop me a message on Instagram it, or TikTok. So at Strong the Saddle um, with an underscore at the end for Instagram. There is no underscore at the end of TikTok because I got there first. And my website as well is www.chrissyhawkins.com. So there's a contact box there if you want to drop me a message or anything like that. But yeah, thank you for joining and thanks for watching this back. And I really hope that you do enjoy it and you take something from it as well. I really do appreciate everybody who listens to this podcast. So if you please could help me with the algorithm and leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And even, you know, if you want to reach out and suggest topics for me, I'd be delighted to hear from you. Drop me a DM on Instagram or TikTok. And thanks again for listening.